It's a fine balancing act. You know, I was at uh, Expo 86 in Vancouver and this is something I don't know whether anyone has seen this. There was a huge pavilion. I, I think it was bigger than this building. There's a huge pavilion which says innovations that failed. It was mind boggling. It was mind boggling and it was not only models, they were microfilms and videos and all that of innovations that have failed. So, a successful startup by itself I would say is innovation. And the su success of a successful startup is that fine balancing act which he has done. Three years you said, no your business, three years business. If, if a business, you know this is a thumb rule, it is not necessary, if a business crosses the three years, more or less you are okay on track. But from 0 to 3, you really do not know what is happening. You really do not know what is happening. So, to answer your question across the board is very, very difficult, very difficult. Can I add to it? Yeah. Uh, see, if you are an enterprise company, you should uh, look back, you know, there is wonderful videos done and, and internet 2.0. There is this video on uh, National Geographic special about how companies like yours and others actually made it through. Their success stories, what did they do? Wha how did uh, Microsoft beat everybody else when it was actually going down, you know? How did Google come up, you know, when Microsoft was so dominant play player, how did Google come up? What methods it used? In fact, Microsoft went to each dealer. He didn't have the cash reserves the other company had. It was beating, the competition was beating it. Microsoft had to go to each dealer and sell it to the people and embed into their things. If it's an enterprise application, you should look at dealerships and all, how companies have done in the past. If you can see and take that, because most companies, including Microsoft, didn't have cash. Today, they are having lots of cash, but their product is same. Even now, the product is more or less the same, 20 years uh, down the line still. So, those kind of things, if you can look at, they didn't spend money, but yet they achieved their first 10 things in terms of dealerships. And it's a very good way to go about. That's my recommendation, but apart from Good, that. good, good. Take a look. So, this is uh, one way we just discussed or which is, I would say, the way most of us have followed, that we have tried to piggyback ride somebody else because anything else uh, normally does not work out. You, you must understand that uh, how, you know, you need a, a, a quite a bit of acumen to have good marketing people and in 99 percent of the cases, you cannot start with a team of five, ten people. You start with a team of two or three and if out of the two, three, one is good, he is out of your company in the next three, four months. Marketing people are one of the most elusive characters I have ever met and they are glib talkers, absolutely glib talkers. In these 38 years, I can tell you, oh boy, a marketing fellow will sell you also. Good man. Yeah. The, the, the only, only thing is that it is uh, worthwhile. It's not easy, but it is worthwhile. It is the people who do marketing for you. And it is worthwhile to go and talk to them for a limited period arrangement. They are also agreeable to that, a limited period arrangement, because the marketing agency works on the system of volumes. So, whatever, you know, they have a structure in place. So, whatever is added, added, adds to their bottom line. So, they, they are, and there, there are some very good agencies. So, you have to select and work with them. And similarly, 
a separate support service group. As a matter of fact, you know, when uh, I uh, started and I built up, uh, I used to handle the entire eastern region for about 14, I mean, I was uh, a constitutive attorney in 14 companies, I mean, like a partner. So, I, I, my arrangement with the companies was that I will be uh, looking after the entire eastern region. So, most of the companies uh, that I was handling was in, in uh, office automation, uh, instrumentation, uh, business office. So, what I did was that I set up a separate support service group in Calcutta. And I had some 12 people, technical people in the which was a separate company. It was not part of my company. But it took time. It took me nearly three years to do that. I just have one question regarding yeah. the support service. So what my experience actually, uh, I'm speaking out of my current problem. When I have a marketing team and you know, a couple of them actually handle it, it's working like a feedback loop and there yes. the only the technical team which needs to modify the product gets involved after that. Okay. The support actually by the same people who did the appointment and all, if they are little bit trained, it is helping me. But uh, would it help to have a separate support? How would I integrate my feedback system into the product development? Uh, uh, there are two aspects to this. One is as the, this question you raised, how do you integrate the feedback system? That is not difficult. You will see that I will be going and talking about what is called a bread and butter line. If you have a separate support system, it does not necessarily, you know, the, the, the expertise of that group of people is not necessarily limited to what you are dealing in. So, it becomes a source of revenue. It could become, I mean that all depends on what decision you take and it is an excellent source of revenue. Yeah, so the, this thing was uh, pricing what is price and I have written here price is equal to cost plus goodwill. Okay. Very, very simple. Anybody wants to comment on this? Yes. Yeah, for a startup company, what will be the goodwill? For a startup company, if there is no goodwill, then there is no profit. Survive. How can they survive? Uh, without having goodwill and how can they survive? Uh, without having sufficient cash flow, without having any marketing strategy. So our friend from Pune, he has the goodwill of the Pune police. <laughs> so he'll get the police people for you. Yeah, tell me. You tell us. How, where did you get the goodwill? Uh, basically, uh, it's, it's actually a long story, but uh, somehow we came in contact with the Pune police because we had some uh, case going against some other people. So anyways, uh, so when they ran into this problem, so this person he contacted us and he asked me how can I you know, speed up this process and uh, because he knew me from before, uh, so he, he contacted me and I, we told him that you know, we'll find a solution for you. And we tried, but we couldn't find any existing solution. So then he said, why don't you guys write it for, for me? So that's what we did then, eventually. So it was just because we knew him from uh, the past. No, that, that is one time. But now when you are in business, I hope, you're still yeah, in business. Yeah. So uh, how did you generate the goodwill? I mean, I'm sure that you couldn't have gone to every customer and said, you know, I work for the police. That fellow will throw you out if you say that. We sort of like suppose this fellow calls me back you know for some changes or for some uh, more additional features can you tell us what is goodwill goodwill is uh, customer's confidence yeah your credibility sort of thing he knows that you won't run away tomorrow A any anybody wants to change that definition how about you why don't you try so it's basically a commitment towards com uh, customer so whatever you commit, you uh, there's a common thing like uh, overcommit and underdeliver. It's very important. And that is the most important part to um, build that trust. Once the trust yeah, yeah. is there, the customer will never go anywhere else, unless and until you are not on. Uh, you see, well, the uh, matter of uh, price. Uh, it's uh, I very simply put it. It is of course not going to be this simple, but. In generic terms, it's your cost 
plus how you interact with your customer. Now, say look at an area where uh, my friend is working in, which is services. He may be for a short time, short, there is short duration of time, may be giving the product at a price, now mark my words, at a price which is less than his cost price. Is it possible? Is it possible? Yes, it is possible. Because that he feels will generate the goodwill he is looking for. So, you see the goodwill is the most critical yet the, the, the biggest unknown entity in your price factor. <coughs> you see what happens in most startup companies we tend to go by a pricing tab which we see in stores. So, you see Lux so much, you know Wrangler jeans so much, this so much, that so much. You know this is very interesting, pre-liberalization pre days there were no freebies, oh, you, even soaps were in short supply. That fellow will say, Lux sabun nahi hai. There will be some rubbish there. He says, ye hi lena hai to lo nahi to nahi Post-liberalization, you find you go to a store, everybody is giving a freebie. Buy two shirts, get one free. And these are branded. So, obviously now, with the present scenario, this matter of goodwill is something which is across the board. So, do not go by what you see of a MNC's fixed price. There is nothing called a fixed price. Uh, sir, regarding this, I want to speak. Uh, uh, ten years back, we were uh, manufacturer for shoes for Bata. So, we were number one manufacturers for PVC shoes in Delhi. So, uh, the cost at which we provided them shoes, let us say it was around between 40 to 45 rupees. And the MRP of that shoe, particular shoe in the market was 130 rupees. So, that is the goodwill which they are running. They are doing nothing in it, but uh, the goodwill is what they are earning in it. But from tell me something, are, are, is Bata in the same position today in the market? No, sir. That is the point. That is the point. See, what he says is right. In, a, in a, This definition is not sacrosanct. I mean, this definition is a pointer. Obviously, they did not generate that goodwill. If they had, because I, I, to the best of my knowledge, they are the oldest shoe manufacturing company in the world. If they had, they would have still be number one. And looking at the sort of market networks they have across the country, because what I know is most of their outlets are either owned by them or in long term lease. Who has this? Nobody has this. In no. spite of that, they have not. Yes, please. Maybe we can see the, uh, we can say that, uh, yeah, goodwill uh, depends upon uh, other factors as well. Uh, Bata's products were not that much innovative as compared to the market trends were there. So that's why uh, youngsters, uh, Reebok and Nike conquered them after that because of the innovative products which they bought. Partly you are right. The other because part, the competition. Yeah. The other part is that uh, if you notice, uh, since you are there for ten years, that earlier on, Bata's will shell, sell their shoes through two types of outlet, their own, and through an outlet called BSC, that Bata Shoe Company. Today, Bata shoes are available in every shoe shop. Is not only in Bata Shoe; they are available in every shoe shop. The reason being, the reason being, the uh, at a point of time when you have a regulated market, and the business being done in a regulated market, the Bata was supreme. So they had a fantastic overhead. So the cost, I, I, that's how, that's what I said that they could not generate that goodwill. There are people who have generated that goodwill even over the years, even today. One, I'm, I don't know whether you will agree with me, one is this Park Avenue, this Raymond's clothing. Yes. 
I, I, I mean, they, they were pre-liberalization for a long time. I mean, years actually, very old mill. And even post-liberalization, now you see all foreign brands and everybody, but still they hold their own. The reason you, they could not generate that goodwill is because they did not try for the goodwill. You know what you said at the very beginning of definition of goodwill? Your own definition, if you could go back to that, Bata did not do what you said they should do for goodwill. So, let us understand that goodwill is something which will help you generate revenues. So, this is what I was trying to come to. You have to have goodwill. It is nothing to, you know, the questions like how can a new company have goodwill? Yes, a new company can have a goodwill. This is what you generate. You generate goodwill. You, as I, I, one of the ways is that, as I said, but you need not go that way. You can still have cost plus and generate goodwill. It, uh, you went to this man and he had this problem and you could sort out his problem in five days. You have generated his goodwill, but suppose you had not been able to sort out this problem. Then what? Then what? And in majority cases, what we find, especially in the support service area, in, in this country even today, we are way behind. I, I bought a, a multi-license uh, antivirus software. So I bought it for my office and I told that fellow, load it. He loaded it. So after some time, my office fellow says, sir, this is not working. So I said, it's, it's not a pirated version. It is an official version. So why isn't it working? So he, he called up that chap, he says that after you, uh, uh, what do you call that, after you register. So they sent an email and that email has been sent and uh, you have to tell us the uh, code from there. So I said, I don't see any email. And even if it has come, it may have come as spam. How do I know what has happened? So that fellow says, no, unless you get that email, nothing can be done. And so it is, everything is lying like that. So I have a brand new antivirus software. The vendor says nothing can be done. End of story. What do you do? In my case, of course, I have not paid him. But <laughs> if you have paid him, what do you do? So let us understand this goodwill very well. Don't think that as a new company, as a startup, you don't have a good way. You know, can anybody, uh, who, you know, one, two, three year company, anybody say how you can generate a good will? Uh, basically, first, it will be on your personality and then your contacts. First two sales or first two points is your own contacts or your own network of people you'll approach and you'll take a testimonial or something there then you say you work like as if it's your own uh, baby and you take it forward from there and saying that this is the cost I'm going to sell it at and you stick to that it will be difficult in the first two three times people will say you're expensive you are a startup you are not going to get this price and all that yet if you stick to your uh, system and you follow your methods uh, I have a customer who said no to me because of the price. After uh, after we interacted with another client and I gave him a testimonial, this is a client. And uh, he had another product, competing product. He moved back from them to us because of the experience he had with me. Even though he's paying almost one and a half times my uh, to my nearest competition. The only thing is because of the relationship, marketing happened because of uh, recommendation that was there because of the uh, reliability of all that and not only that he can call us and we are reachable as a startup that is the best advantage we have we can be the first people who will be reachable we will be the decision maker compared to any big product big company that is a great uh, strength for a startup what worked me for was uh, rather than uh, on the other side of the table I aligned with him rather than selling the product I tried to be an advisor so get the solution to the problem. Don't worry about buying my product. If it, if I solve your problem, whichever way, 
next time the guy is going to refer back to me, uh, what do I do in this situation? That has worked for me. Uh, this is what I think products. Sorry, sorry. The mobile platform. Mobile. mobile. SMS based right it is. It could be anything. Okay. Yeah. Sir, also <coughs> for a very new startup, we can use the goodwill of others who are involved uh, in development of a product. Uh, for example, if you are manufacturing this type of bottle water, suppose, and we have to compete with Bislery. Then we can say that uh, the machineries, uh, we can engage the goodwill of the machineries, uh, machinery suppliers or the name of them. Uh, we are using the best machineries which are available in the market or we can compare them that it is being used by Bisleri and we are using them. Also, uh, many people sir, associated with us uh, in the development or upcoming of that product. Say the core team who is involved in designing this product or manufacturing this product. That can be also a plus point. You see, uh let us uh, again uh, understand uh, the business part of it. The, what is the business part of it? That a startup company would look for a client who is established, who can use his product, who can pay. So there are, uh, let us say, who can pay, <laughs> obviously is established, assuming he is established, not one of the sort of big signboard and no money. I am not <laughs> I am saying that. But a person who can pay is established and he is the startup. What is his plus point? You see, one of the biggest advantages that we have today in this country is that across the board, industry realizes that we are living in the knowledge driven economy. So, a person, a startup today is more than not a qualified person as against what it was 10 years ago that you are talking of. Is a qualified person and is fairly well qualified. He, when he is speaking, like he said, his entire skill of communication, he is speaking, the other fellow, sort of, in comparison to him, has seen it all. He's seen it all. When I speak to a startup company, in five, seven minutes, I know whether he is up to the mark. What concerns me is his delivery schedules. That is the only concern. I am I quite, I'm quite sure he is capable. I am quite sure that he will be able to do what he is saying he will do. The only concern is if he says I will do it in one month, I, I am not very certain about that. Because, uh, you know, he, his setup is not, I mean, it, it, I have been proved more right than wrong in this. That is the goodwill you have today. You must build on that. When you go to a customer as a, as a new startup, you must carry your CV with you and maybe give it to him. Let him see who you are. It's important. In bu business, is not about buying a product off the shelf. Please understand that. I don't know how many of you know this. Business is more about knowing your background. I want to know the background of this guy who is coming and trying to sell me this. Always. Not today. Always. The advantage today is that your background is your qualification. There is a huge plus today and it is an accepted thing not only in this country, across the world. It is an accepted thing that startups are extremely versatile and adapt to change both in terms of technology and in terms of structures which a large company cannot. So, you will create or have to create a goodwill on that to begin with. Subsequently, what will be your goodwill? You are the best judge. That totally depends on how you handle it. You have seen how people spoil goodwill just a few days ago. You see, if, if you take a axe and chop your own feet, no, mat, no, no matter what I say, <laughs> it is not going to help. But the initial part, as of today, as of now, right here, you are your goodwill, you are your brand ambassador. Please remember that. That's what I said, you know, when we started this discussion, we said that, are you the Raja? You have to ask yourself. You must go to the basic. If you are not the Raja, I don't think this is for you. 
really speaking. And then you create your goodwill. And that is what will be the essential price of your product, your cost and then the goodwill. Now what uh, I have done is that I have combined two slides uh, into this. So it, it also talks about where do you get the commodity goodwill. Make yeah. One point about the goodwill. Yeah. See, uh, we have to understand this in lot of dimensions. One dimension is when, when as a startup, uh, I am selling myself apart from my company also. I am also going and showing my resume and all that. So we came here, IIT. I have done courses in IIT. I have done courses in IIC. I have done courses from Stanford also. So that particular uh, thing really adds a lot of credibility to the product you are giving compared to anybody else. And you know, it is a really good uh, brand association you can take from. Uh, doing multiple courses and taking that uh, as a as an as a CV of yours and selling that as a startup will really adding a lot of value. True, that's true. Now, what I uh, would uh, request the participants to do is, I would like them to do a recap from this slide. I, I will go back sl uh, slide by slide, and I want you to do a recap, and let us see: Are we connecting things? You know, whatever we spoke, like we stopped at goodwill. Are things before that is logically connected to where we have come? I mean, so we do a short recap. So I will request anybody. Why don't you start? Okay. So we we were talking about goodwill uh, for a young startup, how he can uh, leverage on his goodwill. Uh, for a big brand, there will be a good deal, but we are looking at a young startup. Startup, how he can have uh, goodwill, uh, like his personality, his CV and uh, his contacts, his personal contacts, this what one of the things, where we left off, I am starting from that. Is there anything else you want to say? No, we go back to the slide previous to that. <clears throat> so why did we come to the word goodwill? Uh, we came to the word goodwill because we were talking of the pricing of your product or services. So the, the goodwill became very important when we thought of accessing the market at a certain price. So that is why we were speaking about goodwill. Would anybody want to add to this? Would anybody would like to add to whether this, this really connects to goodwill or not or anything else which is pertinent to this slide? Okay. <clears throat> we go back to the one previous to that. That what would be the market strategy? Okay, so we we have the entire option. One is uh, that have your own marketing team, have your own market support, or you piggyback ride at least for a period of time with some people. Now, if uh, if you if you see this. Uh, you have to understand that uh, you have to strategize before you come to a price. You see why price, uh, the slide which says price is after market strategy. Because you cannot strategize once you have fixed a price. It, everything will depend on how, how do you access the market, what sort of market are you really looking at. Then we were talking of the key word user friendly. So then we, that is before we come to whether you strategize, how to strategize, we are talking of your product which you still do not know which product because as many of you said that there is always a confusion about which product to take to the market, how much your view of the product is important vis-a-vis -vis the customer, we came to the conclusion that it has to be user friendly product and who says it is user friendly obviously the customer. So you need to bridge the gap between your technology and the customer and make the customer feel that he is using something which is 
he, he can use, let us put it this way that he can use. So, we are calling it user friendly uh, nomenclature which is very common. In addition to this when whenever we are uh, talking about a startup company and obviously we are talking here of a technology startup, the technology startup companies tend to promote technology. You, we have to all understand and for that matter the entire discussion features various innovation in technology. So, when we are talking of other features, the person would be talking of multiple features irrespective of the fact whether the prime use of the product needs all these features. So, what, what does it tell us? It tell us, tells us one thing that let us not clutter up the thing with features, let us also understand that the market is the business, technology will enable that business. So, this is one word I have not used, but please understand that technology is the enabler. So, we, let us keep that in mind. Then we spoke about, again we spoke about user friendly, then uh, we spoke about how do you really access the market, I mean what do you think is the market and how do you know this is the market. So, so we if you look at the scheme of things the, as of now when we have finally come to the word price before that all this has to be in place. You, you, you must know who are the people or who, which is the uh, domain that you are trying to target and whether that domain is the domain your technology can support. And of course, how do you test the, the uh, product or service that we are you have been talking about. Now, right here before I continue, is there anything else that you would like to say or point out? Yeah? Just to add on the <coughs> point about goodwill. Yes. I think uh, one mechanism uh, by which uh, early stage technology companies can build a lot of goodwill in the market uh, is by off, uh, you know by starting out as product come services companies where they offer consulting or provide some kind of services uh, to their potential customers. That develops uh, a bond of trust because uh, the customer gets to work with you. They, you know, uh, over multiple interactions, uh, they gain an understanding of uh, the company, both in terms of personal uh, goodwill uh, one on one, uh, as well as goodwill as a company in terms of uh, your uh, adherence to deadlines, uh, your product delivery quality, your billing, etc. And I, I think uh, that is one uh, very uh, rather easy uh, but important way to you know gain goodwill. Uh, for companies without spending a lot of money. In fact, uh, you can earn some money out of it. Yeah. Uh, when it comes to the pricing for as a startup, uh, there is also a thought which goes on a pricing which says that what is the uh, price that customer is willing to pay, that is the price. You have to work back your cost accordingly. Uh, how do we superimpose these things with the startups and the uh, cost plus goodwill thing? You see, we, uh, I, I think this is very pertinent. We, we have been discussing the issue of price on very simplistic two words, cost and goodwill. And some of us here who already run business for quite a few years, we understand that our costing in the beginning were not correct. I, I think it has happened to all of us. So, uh, th that is one of the areas where uh, obviously, we have lost out in the price part also, uh, in the in the sense that uh, we have sourced uh, our raw materials at prices which are far higher than what available. Normally, that is what has happened to many of us. The second thing that we have simplified in our uh, assumption here is that the other part of the price comp component is goodwill. Now, what? Uh, we have also discussed is that uh, at a point of time it can happen that you are giving a particular service for a specific period of time at below cost. 
to create a certain level of goodwill. It is not desirable, but sometimes you have no other alternate but to do that. And in many cases, it has paid dividend, many cases. As a matter of fact, when I uh, started uh, my uh, career in business, so the one of the areas, uh, the, my friend there said that about giving consultancy, uh, I, I, I was uh, a very good sound recordist also. So I used to get a lot of uh, inquiries from uh, large schools, uh, groups, and normally the convent groups, to set up auditoriums. The first such contract I got was from Don Bosco and they had some German aid which in 1975 was something to tune of 6 lakhs which was a princely sum. And I had no clue about what German equipment to get and neither was I in a position to support that. I mean I could install it, I, I knew that. but. Suppose something goes wrong with it, then I, I didn't know how to service that. So after uh, quite a few months of negotiation, I convinced them to go in for an Indian equipment. But I think what happened in that process was that they were a little upset that they didn't get the German equipment because they had the German aid and all that. And so they were saying that, no, this price is, you see the, uh, when you set up an auditorium with a soundproof room, and then there is a monitoring console and things like that. There are areas which are strictly not technology. I mean, it is technology, but not electronics. There, there you have to have soundproof rooms, that is carpentry. You have to have special acoustic tiles, which have to be fitted by a carpenter. I am not going to fit it. Then there has to be special electrical cables laid down, which again is not my job. The electrician has to do all that. So, you know, they started bargaining with me on that and I was too new to really know, I mean, what should be the rates of an electrician or a carpenter and it was a very large setup. It was a very, very large setup. So, what happened was I, I landed up really doing it at cost. It took me a month, I had no, no surplus out of that. But you know what happened was that for, for this was 76. Even today, I have a relation with that group, even today. But that time, I had made no money out of it. So we come to the next part. The next part, I say, uh, have you got one of the following? Tie up with a known company, support from, a ma from marketing groups. So uh, this is uh, uh, ideal actually, I mean, I, I, nothing in marketing is ideal. This is something one would really love to have. If you are an OEM supplier, you know, it takes off a lot of your headache. Uh, so, uh, is it easy to become an OEM supplier? Not difficult really. Anybody here is an OEM supplier? No, but it is not difficult. Now, now with uh, a lot of uh, products in the market, mm, people are also looking around for, uh, for these sort of technologies from small groups. Uh, and uh, we have this wonderful uh, case study of these Maruti vendors. They are all small timers at one time. So, isn't it? And uh, so, I think this is an area which should be explored uh, and explored, uh, explored uh, critically and see that whether uh, the other thing is that, I mean, I am generalizing here, so uh, I can also give you very good case studies there if there is time. The other thing is, uh, I was just talking to my friend Anil here, and what uh, the IT and ITS company in India uh, is, uh, the startups that is, essentially looking for, looking at cutting edge technology in ICT. Uh, we really don't have that in India. I mean, I, I have not heard. We, we don't have IC, cutting edge technology in ICT in India. We are very, very well known for IT services. And uh, we, uh, I mean, we have a name worldwide on that. Now, if you look at the sort of business opportunities 
that is there in the agriculture field where you can enable the entire area which is huge with IT. So, if there are IT enabled services in agriculture, I think sky is the limit. Now, in that case, you, you it is really not a very big job because now you are uh, probably aware that most of these village panchayat get money directly. So, you have to make an effort to get in touch with them and they are good people. You, you have to show them working models, you cannot give them a PowerPoint presentation. Yeah, no, that is true. But many of the panchayats are also very educated, panchayat pradhans, they are also quite educated. So, but if you look at what are the areas where an IT company can go into and there is mind boggling. You can go into bioinformatics in plant biotechnology area. You can go into logistics of the movement of agricultural produce which is perishable. You can look at storage, both storage both in terms of uh, the various parameters for storage as also for packaging and storing. Then uh, I mean, I mean uh, you can go for uh, what we call uh, the, uh, the base le level of processing. You know there are, there are processes uh, which are very simple because uh, yet uh, this not been done. So, th these uh, are certain areas which uh, you should be looking into. I, I have uh, excellent case studies in this, uh, excellent. I mean uh, you know there, there are people who have gone into integrated farming. The integrated farming as I understood it, I am not from agriculture area. So, as I understood it was that you do multi cropping, it is not multi cropping. The fellow is having, uh, this is actual case, that fellow started with poultry, now he has poultry, he has pisciculture, piggery, goatery and he is using the, you know, the, the droppings of these birds and all that as fertilizer in his organic farm. And this fellow was doing in 2005 when he came to me, he was doing something like 40 lakhs or something. Now, he is about 1.75 crores. So, you, can we and I have spoken to him. He says that I would be uh, grateful if somebody does it, but he has to show me obviously. I mean you, as I said, you can't go and give him a PowerPoint presentation. That will not work. Support from marketing groups, again it depends on what sort of product you have. If, if you are basically into services, then really speaking, you do not need support from marketing groups. You should build up your own clientele. If you are into products, it is better you go for a marketing group. If the investments otherwise are quite big and uh, you, you do not have a cushion. If something goes wrong, you do not have cushion. If the answer is no, you do not have all this, then what do you do? This is the basic thing you should do. You know, identify the area that you can service. You know, the, I, I have a saying to this, like you are invited to a feast and there is a huge table laden from that door to here. You cannot eat everything that is on the table, you will die. So, <laughs> you try to identify what you want to eat and at what frequency. You, even that you gobble up, then you get bloated. Market is very similar, we, especially in a country like India, it is a huge market, it is true, it is a huge market, it is unlike countries in Europe and all that, our markets are phenomenal, absolutely. We have a phenomenal market. You know, I, I was again talking to Anil and we were exchanging notes about his background and all. You know, Anil, one of the guys I have... Uh, brought him into capacity building program, a chap called Dhrupad Raja. Dhrupad Raja is a BCom chap and he came to me, he says, sir, I will grow mushrooms. It is a very common thing, you know, this fellow, you can't sell mushrooms. I, I, do you know that you can't? Mus mushroom is sold by different technique altogether. So, I said, okay, you want to sell mushrooms, sell mushrooms. So, after some time he came back to me and he said, I, I told him it is difficult, he came back to me, he said, it is very difficult. You can give the mushrooms but you won't get the money. So, I told him do not do all this, let me do one thing, 
why don't you take training in vermicomposting? So I sent him to an R&D lab of the government of India to get a training on vermicomposting. He has become so good, he has become a consultant in vermicomposting. Can you beat it? He is just a BCom. So our markets are huge. You have a product, you have a service. I mean, we have discussed uh, the flow of the market. Now we are coming down to individual basics. We have a product and you think this product will be wanted by people. You know how many, what is the population in this country? It is about 1.10 billion. Do you think you can reach even half, 5 percent, 4 percent? So what is it you want to reach? Now just think what we are talking here about. You select a geographical area that is accessible to you and work out these simple three things, cost of your travel, delivery and cost of support services. That is it. You are done. You are done. I am telling you, you will succeed. This is a sure shot formula. But you make a mistake here. That is, you have chosen an area which, you know, what, what happens is, I, I, it, has, it has happened in the past, it is happening now is that there are people, the distributors as we call them, they will have a distribution say in a city like Asansol. Asansol borders with a town called Barakar, it is across the Damodar river. Barakar is in Bihar, Asansol is in Bengal. There is a sales tax check post, but you can walk across the bridge, so there will be a sales tax differential. So that fellow will sell in Barakar. So he thinks he is making money. He is not. He is not making money. He thinks he is making money because he is selling some volume of goods there. But after some time, that Barakar distributor, he will take his revenge. He will do some naughty things. This is very common. It happens in every product line. We, we must understand that if you want to handle both Barakar and Asansol, you take distribution of Barakar also. What I am saying is, it in, in, in this particular case, you are not the distributor, you are not the marketing group. But when you, I am assuming that since you will be doing it yourself, the marketing part yourself, so you are like a distributor, you have to have a distribution wing. So when you have the distribution wing, you must be very clear where you are giving products to whom and at what price and do not try to just extend it locally. Because if you do that, the summation of the entire area that you have extended will be probably double the geographical area you were initially trying to access and the whole thing will tumble down. Anybody wants to say anything here? If yes, if you have uh, that, that sort of tie up, the question is that you do have uh, the sort of tie up we were talking about uh, with uh, OEM and marketing group is a great load off your shoulder, no doubt. I mean, you are far better placed. But you must also understand the market is a dog-eat-dog -dog policy. Market is tough. There are no quarters given and no quarters asked. If, you, if I can sell and undercut you, I will sell and undercut you. As simple as that. Any tie-up, especially in, in OEM supplies, lasts only to the extent it is not revoked. He is your big brother. Tomorrow you will say, I don't like your face. Finished. Then you know what, we are educated people, we will say, you know you have written in clause 14A sub para 2. He says, I don't remember whatever I have written. I will take you to court. Then you are again finished. You, you <laughs> You take a big company to a court, you are finished. Absolutely. I mean, in Hindi there is a saying 
that the cat fell into the water. So the other chap saying, I took it and then I took it down. So that, you know, so one is that your tie up is gone, cut your losses and get back. And the other thing is that forget about filing any case or anything. It doesn't work. With large companies, it doesn't work. I would also agree that large companies would not do it, but large companies, what they do is they use a part of your money to run their business. So there is also a problem of payments and that is also cyclic. It keeps happening. And uh, really speaking, uh, if you are a startup company and you want to go in for an OEM contract, you have to have a good kitty. You, you cannot do it on something like 25, 30 lakhs outlay. You need a good size funding and uh, a better part of that funding has to be your own. Because if you are looking at financial institutions giving you funding, that is also a very critical area today. Because the bank loans are very clearly stated, I mean which is a paper which you all of us sign, that it is called loan on demand. So if the bank demands that you give that loan back, you have to give it back. Very funny, but it is there. There's a paper you sign, all of us sign. But then, you know, what, what is to be done if I have a good OEM contract? Then do I leave it? What do I do? What do you say? What do I do? I am a startup company. I am hardly one, one and a half years. I have a good OEM contract. What do I do? Yeah, but what about money and all that? Part of it, you have to take loan. Yeah, then the other, I don't have, you can understand, startup company, as I said, say 25, even I'm saying there's a larger figure, 25 lakhs outlay, very few startup companies have, assuming they do have. But then uh, you need an OEM contract, anywhere would require a 1 crore plus. How do you do it? Subcontract. Huh? Subcontract. No, no, no. Subcontract, you are finished. Find a financer. You get somebody to take some equity in your company. Yeah. Not a financer, you see, you can. You can get somebody to take equity. He can also be a working partner. And uh, if you have a good contract, then you will get somebody to take an equity in your company. So, it, it, you know, then the entire ball game changes. You know, like what uh, we were speaking earlier, up to goodwill. If you are asking somebody to take an equity in your company, financer, what he is saying, I do not agree because there are financers in the country, but financers work on a separate uh, system also. Very similar to our financer, little more tough than the venture capital fund managers, but uh, they, are, they look at the fixed amount of return in their capital every year, which is uh, normally about 2% a month. So that is very difficult sometimes to achieve. Yeah. But in case I of have OEM, it is uh, I mean, uh, the business is confirmed. OEM, you don't have any uh, you know, marketing strategies. Yeah, you don't. But at the same time, you know how OEM pricing is done. OEM pricing, they will break it down to absolute basic raw material cost. And they will fix your overheads and say so much percent overhead. And then they will say, that, give me so much volumes. And we'll don't worry, we will revise the price after one year. It's never revised. It's never revised, but uh, yeah, we can work upon uh, backward integration. Absolutely. Yeah. That so, but you know, it's a, a business is definitely a risk venture. What he's saying is correct. I mean, it is a risk venture. It is not is no absolutely sure shot that this is the way and the, the other way is not the way. But uh, if you do get a OEM contract, you must. Uh, look into it well and it's definitely worth going into that. But uh, please remember the rules of engagement changes when once you have somebody as an equity partner in your business. I, I have a different uh, take on this. Okay. Uh, when we are looking at equity, equity we have to understand is the most expensive form of taking capital or financial needs. If it's just finance, that is what you are getting because of uh, that approach, 
I would recommend go to a finance guy. You know, it's better because he'll charge you at least an interest, and you're clear there. If it's just money that is you're getting from an equity holder, uh, sometimes what happens is uh, you get to a venture capital uh, relationship where you get the relationship advantage. They <coughs> already have a network, and your sales will shoot up instead of ten. They'll be hundred. Obviously, you know, uh, uh, in, in ten crores, uh, you having thirty percent is better. Then in fifty lakhs having hundred percent. If your sales are increasing because of the tie up, and there is a financial advantage, it's a very ideal tie up. But sometimes it we are not in that situation. We have to run the show. We have to take the money. We are situation. where we have to be in that. Try uh, private financing. If it really doesn't work, then you know I have to ask you one question. The question so is the one point you missed out in private financing, which if you can also elaborate on that, hmm. the private financer doesn't give you a, a finance for uh, an extended period of time. Yeah, you, normally, these are uh, hundis which circulate for three months. Uh, it can you can have an arrangement yeah. for six months. The thing is, if he calls it back and your business is on, you are in big trouble. So. That that is one uh, point uh, why I said that. Uh, yeah, that that's true in that lines. I mean, from where you're taking the finance, it all depends on you. Uh, also, the sale it puts a lot of pressure on you to put focus on sales, and try to move the product and try to get the sales rolling. Uh, apart from this, my question is, if we have to do it at early stage, seed stage, and you know, uh, take off stage. You know, I would call it seed stage is where your idea is there. Uh, equity at seed stage. Uh, what do you think of these three scenarios? No, I, I, I have never spoken of equity in my previous part of the presentation. The equity comes now because we we are looking at a phenomena today. It's really a phenomena where there are a lot of youngsters with some some of them having excellent ideas. Now, what we do not see is that I mean probably it is there, but we don't see it so often. We do not see uh, a fair amount of those products in the market, you understand what I mean. So probably it is there in 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 very uh, uh, n narrow geographical areas. So one of the reasons why we do not see them in that uh, the market as we know it is probably because that they are unable to access that market. We're looking at the sort of uh, other issues like uh, ma marketing support, uh, funding, and all that which needs to be in place. Now, if this particular group, which obviously cannot happen to everybody, if particular this group do get an OEM support, suppose they do get an OEM support, then why not? As a matter of fact, I was traveling uh, the other day uh, from Calcutta, Bhuvaneshwar. I met a gentleman, senior gentleman, who in 1972 has set up a bulletproof glass manufacturing unit in Jaipur. Now, of course, uh, long years, he, it was a small unit, he brought technology from Germany. Now, he, over the years, uh, he is uh, one of the prime uh, suppliers to DRDO, to defense and things like that. He is a short market, but I have not spoken to him, but one thing I can assume that uh, obviously he was not that size in 72 than what he is today, but uh, the fact is that oh, in 72, he may not have had the contract also. In those days, we never worked in that sort of system. But uh, over the years, he has uh, an assured business because his business is an OEM supply. That he told me. He said the police and defense are his customers. So that, that, that is something which we are not seeing in the present young group uh, that uh, is around us and uh, I, I, I'm, I'm sure that uh, it may so happen that some of their excellent ideas are not seeing the light of the day because of uh, some wrong structuring. Yeah, who wants to comment on this? When you, when you have clear cut orders from OEMs, uh, even banks are uh, willing to uh, help you towards, uh, say, the working capital operations at least. So, uh, <coughs> if you have clear-cut orders and uh, the OEM, the to, to whom you are supplying are big companies. So, 
so the uh, the comfort level is very high and uh, so far as um, the funding is concerned you, you may be even able to break it up like long term what you require and say working capital what you require and even the <coughs> your uh, uh, so customer maybe help you maybe able to help you a little to this extent in this uh, some of my friends are already in business what is your experience about banks giving working capital no no uh, let, let us share yeah. Suppose uh, if you are working for somebody else, you have money. No, no, no. I am asking a basic question that uh, do you, do you, what is your experience with the bank yeah, that's in, what I'm in saying. working if, capital? If you are working uh, for OEM, then it's better. No, no, going better. What is your experience, I am asking? They provide working capital in that case. Yeah. No, no. How much working capital they provide? Sufficient. On the basis of business. They are giving only 20% of the total balance sheet. Do you, do you, do you uh, are you aware of the fact that your supplies uh, to a company, even an OEM, is, is treated by the bank as non-secured? These, these are non-secured debts. So, uh, are you aware of the fact? Yeah, yes. 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 So, so, that they are giving only up to the 20 to 25 percent, not more than this, the total exactly. balance sheet. Not balance sheet, nothing to do with balance sheet. So, these are non-secured debts. So, the banks will have a system of working your sales and they have a system of working the volume of sales vis-a-vis -vis the non-secured debt and that amount which as they give as working capital is a pittance. As a matter of fact, one of the biggest problem is that on paper, the finest lender is SIDB on yes. paper. Yes. If you look at the, they have a book. Sidbi has a book. If you look at the book, you will find that that is the best place to take money <laughs> and one of the reason is that they have a limited client base and they give you excellent service. The fact of the matter is they don't give money. Yeah, they don't give money. And whatever money they give, they give for capex. And that also, I think about 50 to 60 percent they give on capex. So, even so, though commercial banks are also lending the money by fledging some assets, sir. For sorry? Commercial banks like any other SBI or Kendra Bank, they are also providing working capital on the basis of uh, by fledging assets. On no, no. Basis. You see, uh, if you mean assets means as collateral security. Collateral security. Yeah, yes. That is to no problem. No, you have 200 bigas of land and you want 1 crore, anybody will happily give. Yeah. Sir, one more problem is there. Uh, in case of some of the, my friends having a lot of lands. No, I was more interested in knowing uh, actually uh, my friends here who are taking working capital from the bank and how much are they getting. I, I was more interested I just interested want to share it. that uh, yeah. if I can. Yeah. Uh, we have uh, a working capital loan approved OD facility. It's not even a working capital. Uh, it's like an overdraft. Uh, we have two, three banks and the over total uh, overdraft from one bank I have is 24 lakhs. And what is your, if you don't mind, what is your uh, turnover? 2.2 2 crores. Ah, so that is the ratio. So even if you break it up into monthly thing, he has to manage quite a bit. If you, if you look at uh, the, the uh, cash turnover, I mean the w wonderful cash turnover is three months. That is, you know, very good business. So he, how much he makes up? on his own. And listen, he is a running business. So, we, what we are trying to understand here, all of us, I am also trying to be educated by you because uh, as a startup, what is your experience is something I also don't know. What I am trying to understand from you is that what is the situation with your banker, if you are having a banker now who has given you certain facility and uh, how much do you think they will support you if you go ahead and sort of uh, tie up with uh, OEM. You see, uh, let us not uh, go into, well, I am sure that all of us would like to know what is actually happening on the ground because uh, this is something, this discussion is something which will also help you think about it in actual, from tomorrow in your own business that yes, I can do this, you know, the, this guy has done it, so I should really can also go and do that. I just want to share a couple of things to all. Now, the before you do that, I'll tell you a very interesting story. Okay. So we run medical centers in Calcutta. So bank, I, I have no loan from any bank. 
So the banks are after us to give money. And one of the very famous banks, the topmost bank, they've given us a letter saying that at any time you can take 5 lakhs from us without any security. So I said thank you. Recently, uh, we approached the bank for some renovation. And we wanted a small amount of 2 lakhs. Bank said no, no money. We don't have money to give now. We are in bad shape. Yeah, please. Uh, we have to understand the recession scenario here. Uh, while the loan was approved and overdraft was there, uh, the banker told me that uh, after my case was approved, they were not giving because they had AGMs and DGMs telling them not to give whatever is the case. Sometimes uh, you get lucky, sometimes you're not. But it really helps if you have an eight to nine month track record with one bank, all your transactions are with that bank. About seventh month, Standard Chartered, ICIC, and seventh or eighth month, you should give an unsecured uh, working capital up to 10 lakhs. Most banks, DCB, ICICI, any bank will be able to give you if you have a uh, running current account with them for eight, nine months. I mean, that depends on your relationship with the manager also. Yeah, ba bank, actually, they look into uh, how, how is your your uh, debtors are behaving. So, they, they have a system of studying that. No, but, uh, you know, coming back to our original uh, surmise uh, that uh, what do we do? I mean, the, you know, this is a basic question. What do we do? So, the, the, this is uh, something which uh, there were no solution to very still very recently. Now, uh, the government has proposed that SIDBI would give, uh, they, they, they'll have a corpus of 2,000 crores. And very shortly, SIDBI will, uh, will uh, structure it. And probably that would be a way out. I wanted to share this with you.